Welcome to Alaska Earthquake Science Facts. I'm Carl Tate. In the 1960s, for the purpose of nuclear monitoring, the first three seismic arrays were established in Montana, Norway, and just north of Fairbanks, Alaska. Here's a map showing that array, really remarkable um, hexagonal shape here, considering the wilderness that these stations are installed in. It's not too far from campus though. Here we are, Fairbanks, Alaska, and these stations almost in the neighborhood. Here's a publication in Nature, new array from our geophysics correspondence. I won't read the whole thing, but it describes the development of these arrays, the large aperture seismic array in Montana at the end it says, with the United States interest in monitoring Eurasia, Norway was an obvious location for a long period array also, but in order to give increased azimuthal coverage, an array in Alaska was also highly desirable. Here's a paper from 1966, a very odd looking map, but it's the earth as seen from the center of the large aperture seismic array, Lhasa in Montana. And what it's showing is this is the center of the array and immediately nearby, it doesn't have as strong detection capabilities and characterization, but you can see a very oddly compressed and distorted map of the world. The stars represent test sites, the shaded regions are seismic regions. Here's Canada, Alaska. So presumably Fairbanks is somewhere right here, but the purpose is that these test sites, the USSR, are within the detection capabilities for this array. So that's the kind of information used to guide the placement of, of these arrays. Alaska, Norway, Montana. And here's what that array looked like, installed, built in 1964. It's really an array of arrays having 525 short period seismometers and 21 long period seismometers. So there's this 200 kilometer diameter shown here. And then within some of these spots are smaller arrays. So there's a whole fields of studies trying to figure out how to detect very subtle signals from the other side of the planet using arrays of data to help beat down the, the noise and also to characterize the direction that this energy is coming from. Here's NORSAR, the Norwegian Seismic Array, 1968, north of Oslo, an array of arrays having 132 seismometers. And you can look today um, and see that this particular array is still active, maybe not in exactly the same shape, but this shows the station coverages. And now for the third one, the Alaska Long Period Array ALPA, 1966, north of Fairbanks, Alaska. And this is an array of 19 long period seismometers. You can see the scale bar. These stations are separated by about 20 kilometers or so. Here's from a report, um, a seismic array in central Alaska. As I wrote here with its eye on Asia, the figure shows geographic regions used for calibrating the Alaska arrays detection. So you've got an array off the map here to the right of stations, and it's being used to look uh, at the Soviet Union. And in this study, they were using the initial data to try to see, can they discriminate between earthquakes and explosions? And given the era they're in, there are nuclear explosions happening, or at least presumed explosions. And it shows here that when they characterize certain measurements from the seismograms about different magnitudes and amplitudes, they find that the explosions here, the four ones, uh, seem to be well separated from earthquakes. And so that's kind of an example of how these arrays are used to try to tell what's an earthquake and what's an explosion. This table in the report shows number of seismic events, number of presumed explosions uh, during this time period. This shows a map of where these stations are. Again, here's Fairbanks. 
And so in the Fairbanks region, the sites of the southernmost Alpa from 1966 are very close. This is the town of Fairbanks, Tananar River coming through. Um, here's the campus, and you can see the southernmost three sites uh, were, were right there. And as I put in here, maybe perhaps an interesting geocache challenge to go and find some of these sites from 1966. This shows one of the, one of the sites. It looks like you could probably drive or, or access them. Fast forward to today, there are still active seismic arrays in Alaska for similar purposes as the original ALPA array in 1966 was built. And this shows four of these arrays, Burnt Mountain, Indian Mountain, Eielson Ilar, and Beaver Creek. And I'll just show a geographic review of these. Um, this is the Burnt Mountain Seismic Array, Northeastern Alaska. This shows uh, where the stations are. You can see the scale bar at the bottom um, shown that these are you know, a couple kilometers apart, these stations. This shows the Indian Mountain Seismic Array, Western Alaska. Scale bar at the bottom is 500 meters. You can see one, two, three, four, five stations. This is the Eielson Ilar Seismic Array. Um, several more stations in this array. Eielson is the Air Force Base in the Fairbanks region. And you can see these stations shown here. The last one southeast is the Beaver Creek Seismic Array, uh, five stations shown here. So these specialized seismic arrays in Alaska can also be used to examine the fine scale heterogeneity of the deep earth all the way to the center of the core. And I'm just gonna show a sampling of scientific discoveries coming out of these arrays whose primary purpose is for nuclear monitoring. Scattering beneath Western Pacific subduction zones, evidence for oceanic crust in the mid mantle. And I won't give all the details here, but the takeaway here's, for example, ILAR, and here's ray paths of a lot of earthquakes from subduction zones that are being recorded at this array. And the authors are interested in wave energy that bounces off the direct path, hits a slab and comes back to the array. So they're looking at complicated effects um, that can be detected with this kind of array looking from far away. Here's a paper about differential motion of the core. This is published in Science, um, showing here the paths of Here's the source, here's the station. So we can think of Alaska or some array up here. We have waves that are going through the liquid outer core into the solid iron inner core and being recorded. And for that kind of traverse of the planet, you need a very sensitive seismometer and the array helps with that kind of detection. And here it says um, nine additional doublets detected at the college station, two additional doublets detected at the Beaver Creek array. Here's another paper about inner core phases, differential rotation. And again, you see that we're looking at trajectories of, of seismic energy that's sampling right down to the center of the Earth and into this iron core region. Here's a paper about near podal P prime, P prime precursors um, looking at waves that go all the way through the core and bounce uh, near the surface and come all the way back. It's shown here. So here's an event. Ray goes through the center of the core, bounces somewhere near the surface, and comes all the way back. And this is showing that in some of these reflections, they're interested in this heterogeneity just 150 to 220 kilometers um, below the surface. But just a reminder of the kind of creative and exotic things that can be done with these kinds of arrays. Some other titles, ultra low velocity zones, seismic properties of the inner core boundary. Even lateral variations of the Mexico subduction zone derived from weak seismicity, magnitude 3.5 earthquakes detected on a single array at teleseismic distances. So here's this array in Alaska looking at tiny earthquakes 
in the Mexico subduction zone. And it turns out you can use the seismic waves from distant earthquakes to improve the characterization of the shallow earth structure directly beneath the array. So this is looking at, again, centered on ILAR, this Eielson array, and looking at the detailed recordings of events right under the ray. And as these incoming waves are reflected up and down within the crust, you have some ability to characterize the details of the crust itself. So in this case, using the distance uh, uh, events to understand the structure beneath the array. Takeaway topics. Arrays are special configurations of sensors, in our case, seismic stations, designed to improve the detection and characterization of incoming signals. By having several nearby stations, the array can determine what direction, that is back azimuth angle and incident angle, a signal is coming from. Alaska hosted one of the three earliest seismic arrays, ALPA 1966, and hosts four seismic arrays today. Their primary purpose is global monitoring for nuclear explosions, Finally, scientific discoveries have been made with these same arrays, such as insights into the Earth's mantle and core regions. Thank you for watching. Stick around for supplemental material.